Hello everyone, it's Eric Thor here and happy new year, happy 2021. Today I want to talk about the secret of INFJ mind reading. So we're going to walk ourselves through how INFJs read minds, how other people uh, can experience this or understand this about INFJ and how INFJ mind reading works. So how you can mimic and use these things to read minds just as well as any INFJ does. Okay, so first of all, INFJs are very well represented as uh, uh, miniature versions of the Google Cloud. So we're small Google Clouds in a sense, but we only connect to uh, people um, on an unconscious level. So we focus on what people are not saying, what people are uh, thinking, what's happening in the back end of people's brains. So uh, rather than uh, focusing on direct verbal exchanges, uh, INFJs focus on nonverbal or unconscious exchanges with other people. Also, you could call these things fictitious as another alternative for unconscious because in part these things are rooted in fiction or in imagination or in uh, basically constructing an own idea or image of another person uh, or what the other person might be thinking or what their intentions are. Now, um, to take the words of uh, um, Harry Potter, of course these things are happening in your head, Harry, but that, why should that mean it's not real? So uh, just because these exchanges are fictitious in their nature or imaginative, that doesn't mean they cannot be correct. A lot of times INFJs get people very well and that mental construction that INFJs form for other people can be highly accurate, even uh, incredibly accurate to the point where people go, wow, how did that person know that about me? How did they get inside my head? Now, before we get started, I would really appreciate if you could take a second to subscribe. If you want to support the channel, if you could visit patreon.com slash Eric Thor and uh, become a patron, that would be amazing. Thank you all and let's get rolling. As an INFJ myself, what I spend most of my time doing and what you see in my YouTube channel is this ability to go into and step into the other people's heads and to construct in my own idea an experience of what that is and what they, their thinking style is and how they talk and how they experience things. Basically, I'm really good at narrating and acting out social experiences and social situations from other people's perspectives. That means I can step into the shoes of an INFP or an ENTP or an ISFP or whatever personal type and I can kind of take on their experiences and thought patterns and uh, feelings uh, as my own and through the study of MBTI I have become increasingly good at this. So this has been a process for me, something I've been developing since I was a child. And this is something that uh, takes a lot of experience, you know, to build plausible, accurate representations of people that requires you to stay and to remember to stay impartial, to not uh, become negatively influenced by your personal emotions or biases, to overcome uh, discrimination and prejudice, to uh, be able to really see and listen to and hear other people. I read a lot of books and by reading a lot of books and fiction I can get an idea of other people and other people's thought patterns because in books you literally hear other people's thoughts and experiences as they experience life and different situations. No matter if these are real or uh, fictitious in their nature, they still give an idea and indications about how people are and how people act. I spoke to an actor once and I asked her, okay, what's the secret of acting? And she said, well, the secret of acting is if you look at that guy, for example, if you are able to uh, take on that person's walking mannerisms and styles and habits, that's the secret of being a good actor. If you can just see another person on the street and just naturally uh, be able to mimic their patterns and thoughts and experiences and to have an idea about who they are and their background and all those things that is uh, or will match the original to a high level to the point of making it hard to tell the difference so something i noticed this this is something i do naturally when i see other people i naturally mimic their body language when i talk to other people i naturally uh, pick up on their cues and intentions and feelings often to the point of forgetting my own. So I have a habit of, in discussions with other people, forgetting about my own needs and feelings and my own experiences because I am so focused on the other persons. I am so focused on uh, 
finishing their sentences and figuring out what they're going to say or figuring out what they want or figuring out what they feel uh, so that I cannot uh, or will not even recognize my own uh, situation or person in that situation. This is also why people say INFJs are natural chameleons because INFJs, by studying and analyzing other people's uh, experiences and situations, start mimicking and picking up on and acting in the same way as that other person. So if an INFJ is surrounded by ESTPs, the INFJ themselves will also become naturally cocky, upbeat and attentive and energetic uh, in that situation. Now there is a danger to this because even if you are just mimicking another person's experiences or intentions or values, uh, this is still going to be draining for you. So by being around those people, and even if you are very upbeat and very attentive in that situation, your social battery drains very quickly. So if you can learn to rein in the mimicking and to learn when to mimic and when to pick up on and when to take on other people's experiences and behavior, then you can save your social battery and you can last longer in social situations. You'll be able to go to a party without having to leave 10 minutes later exhausted. You can basically manage in situations by putting up a stronger uh, social front and being more comfortable, being comfortable you uh, in high intense social environments. Okay, so let's go back a bit to the Google Cloud thing. What I've found is INFJs are like the Google Cloud in the sense that they're naturally connecting to everyone and everything in a room. So when you are in a room or when you step into an environment, you are every single person in that room, their feelings and experiences and thoughts and values. You are kind of a, a representation of everyone's values. You are kind of like the democratic pole uh, centerpiece of uh, the room. And that means uh, you and your values and opinions and feelings and all those things is a compromised uh, experience of what everyone's values total sum is. So somehow you know or think yourself to know what everyone else is feeling around you and what the compromise, the ideal position, the center or harmony uh, point is between all these congruent viewpoints. So as an INFJ you see yourself as the, the balancing sum whole of everyone in the room, including yourself in that matter. So when you are talking, you are definitely expressing your own feelings and your own values in combination with everyone else's values because INFJs have a natural drive towards harmony. Harmony is uh, basically to find a balancing or comfortable position in any environment. So this is why INFJs often are naturally zen. INFJs are zen in the sense that no matter where they go or what environment they are in or which country they grow up in or which workplace they end up at, INFJs naturally find a comfortable position which is a balance of everyone's wills where they can live in a way without being an obstacle to anyone or becoming going into conflict with anyone or ending up in a bad negative situation with anyone. So. Uh, you feel that you have found kind of the uh, balance on the pole. So you're uh, standing on that pole with the arms spread out and you're kind of finding a way to stand comfortably in this position, lowering your arms and just standing and just uh, wasting no energy, um, basically not um, putting yourself in any difficult position. However, this is an art that takes a long time to develop and uh, there will be situations where harmony is not possible or where you don't know or how to balance different expectations. So if you experience expectations that are conflicting, for example, conflicts between your own goals and values because you have them and conflicts between your co-workers or your boss, that can really cause stress on you and can also drain your energy very quickly. Uh, INFJs naturally want to meet all expectations on them and so they will say yes to too much or they will take on more than they can carry. This is also how uh, why I constantly 
compare INFJs to turtles because they have like they're carrying this whole house on their back with their own feelings and their own uh, everyone's expectations and everyone's values and everyone's goals and ambitions on their own back. It's like a degree of social responsibility that often can go too far. This is also kind of the mind reader's dilemma. So. Um, if you are a person that can predict what other people are feeling or what other people are experiencing, or if you have some idea about what other people's struggles are, you also have a degree of responsibility. You feel a degree of responsibility for other people's feelings and needs. If they are not able to verbalize what it is they want, if they are not able to uh, find a way to do things normally, you feel that you have a need to fix this for them or to handle this for them or to help them with this. So whatever issues other people might be having, you might be taking these issues on as your own and you might be feeling uh, like you are socially responsible for dealing with and helping them express this or helping them manage this. Now there is a right and wrong way to do this and of course the wrong way to do this is to solve their issues for them. The right way to do this is to help them solve their own problems by helping them verbalize it. As an INFJ you want to help people uh, basically uh, figure out what it is they are feeling that they don't know that they are feeling. You can do this very naturally by simply having positive one-on-one -on -one conversations with other people about what it is they want. So here what you want to do is you want to ground your reads with other people. If you imagine another person feeling a certain way, you want to ask them if that's the way they are feeling. You want to fish a bit. You want to go fishing. You want to go and say, okay, could it be that you're feeling this at the moment? Or could it be that you're experiencing that? Uh, are you struggling with this? These kind of basic questions that just get people to open up can be so important and can also help other people feel seen. You don't want to put words in other people's mouths. So you don't want to say, you're angry with me, or you're upset with me, or you're, you're insecure, or you're doing this, or you're doing that. Because other people don't like when you talk or finish their sentences or put words in their mouth, even if they are correct, or no matter if they're right or wrong. People just don't like it because that's boundaries, that's social boundaries, that's very important. You never want other people to put words in your mouth just as well as you don't want to put words in other people's mouths. So always give other people a chance to verbalize what they are feeling and experiencing in their own words. It's as simple as that. Finally, when it comes down to mind reading, you want to also know that this is just normal social narration. It's just an imaginative, fictitious experience. You're literally just imagining the other person's thoughts and feelings and perspectives. So what you're seeing is your own mental construction of other people's experiences and thoughts and values. So this is a really healthy and positive experience. There's nothing wrong with it. There's something that can fundamentally be very positive, but it's also fundamentally biased by your own mood and your own experiences. That means if you are having a bad day, your experiences with other people are also gonna be bad. So your construction of other people will be biased by your own feelings and your own mood. You'll find yourself uh, having imaginative conflicts with other people. You'll find yourself arguing with other people unconsciously. That means other people, you're imagining other people being calm, angry with you. You're imagining other people saying mean things to you. Uh, you imagine people being rude to you or hostile towards you or criticizing you. And you can go through these exchanges where you just let yourself be verbally berated by another person who is having a bad day in your own head. And uh, the other person has no idea this is happening. The other person has never said anything like it to you. The other person has never done anything to indicate this. This is just something that you are projecting on yourself. This is kind of an internalized negative experience that you're using to push or be down on yourself. And it comes from your own insecurities, your own negative feelings, your own anxieties. So this is also why it's so important to ground your reads with other people. Is that, are you angry with me? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> that, then, uh, never mind. <laughs> uh, then uh, pause that exchange. That was not an uh, accurate read. That was not uh, what was really happening. <laughs> Fair enough. Moving on. And just be aware that I'm having a bad day right now, so I'm not very... Uh, I cannot trust my own imagination or my own experiences or my own thoughts 
about other people in this to this extent or I cannot put this word into other people's heads or the other person never said anything like this and it could be that I'm just having a bad day it could be that I'm just imagining this because I'm uh, insecure about something or struggling with something so have those awarenesses so you can have healthy positive conversations with other people both in reality and unconsciously thank you all for watching and I hope to see you all in the next video